in this block, we'll talk about general orthogonal coordinate systems. We'll focus on cylindrical coordinates as an example. This first video will cover the basics of coordinate transforms and what cylindrical coordinates are. The next video will cover integrals in cylindrical coordinates and the final video will cover derivatives. To begin, we will talk about polar coordinates, which is the two-dimensional version of cylindrical coordinates. Let us start with how we can convert between Cartesian and polar coordinates. Define the position vector, which in Cartesian coordinates is given by the x and y coordinate. In polar coordinates, we would instead use the length r and the angle phi to define the position. You may see different names for these. What is important is that it's one length and one angle. Assume that we know the length r and the angle phi, then we can calculate the x value as r cosine phi, and the y value is given by r sine phi. Hence, we could express the position vectors r cosine phi x hat plus r sine phi y hat. To visualize it, Look at how x and y changes when we change the radius r and the angle phi. We can say that the position is a function of r and phi. But how do we calculate this? r can be calculated from the Pythagorean theorem. The angle phi is given by arctan of y over x. But what if we add 180 degrees to the angle? y over x will have the same value here. We can add the additional condition that we add 180 degrees, which in radians is pi, if the x coordinate is negative. To avoid this complication, many systems have implemented the function a tan 2 with two arguments, which can handle the entire interval. Hence, if this function exists, I recommend to use it when calculating phi. The next topic is unit vectors, which is a core part of orthogonal corner systems. Currently, the position vector is given by r and phi, but it still uses x hat and y hat from Cartesian coordinates. We could also use unit vectors adapted to polar coordinates which we'll look into here. As this is a video about general orthogonal coordinate systems, I will cover this part a bit more th theoretical. Hence, I will start by illustrating it for Cartesian coordinates, as it is easiest to understand here. In Cartesian coordinates, we use x and y to describe the position. I want this to be what defines the unit directions. Start by making a small step in the x-coordinate. Start from x and y, this will move us to x plus delta x and y. I want the first unit vector to be in the direction that we move if we add a small change to the first coordinate. We can calculate this small step by taking the difference between r of x plus delta x and y and r of x and y. Then we can divide by the step length delta x. We can identify the left hand side as the partial derivative with respect to x. Hence, in Cartesian coordinates, if we take the partial derivative with respect to x of the position vector, we get the first unit vector x hat. To get the second unit vector, Repeat the steps for the second variable. Take a small step in the y-coordinate. Using the same steps, we will get that if we take the partial derivative with respect to y of the position vector, we get a second unit vector y hat. What is important here is the relationship between the partial derivatives of the position and the unit vectors. Now, let us apply this to our polar coordinates. 
Start by taking a small step in R. The way we calculate this direction is to take the partial derivative of the position with respect to R. The x value becomes cosine phi x at. And the y value becomes sine phi y hat. This will create a unit vector r hat in the radial direction. Next, we will take a small step in the angle phi. This will create the difference according to the green vector, which will be used to create our unit vector. However, note that the green vector will vary with the value of the radius. The length of the green vector will be given by the equation for arc length, as the radius r times the angle delta phi. Now, let us see what happens when we take the partial derivative of the position with respect to phi. The x hat term becomes minus r sine phi x hat. The y hat term becomes r cosine phi y hat. Let us check the length of this vector. We can move r outside the square root. And we can now see that the remaining square root will be 1. Hence, the length of the partial derivative is r. This is the same r as we have in, in the length of the green vector, which is given by r delta phi. To get a unit vector, divide the partial derivative with its length. The r will cancel. And we have our second unit vector phi hat, which indicates which direction we move in when changing the value of phi. Note that the two unit vectors r hat and phi hat are orthogonal. Therefore, we call polar coordinates an orthogonal coordinate system. Note, only a few possible coordinate systems are orthogonal. In this video though, we will focus on those that are orthogonal. Let us talk a bit more about the general case for orthogonal coordinate systems. Assume that the position vector in 3D is given by the three variables u1, u2, and u3. In polar coordinates, u1 would be r and u2 would be phi. u3 does not exist as polar coordinates are two-dimensional. Now we're going to define the unit vectors for this general case. This will be done through the partial derivatives the same way as before. Start by defining the length of the partial derivative with respect to ui as hi. Here we'll let i represent any of them and can therefore take any value of 1, 2 or 3. hi will be a scaling factor that we will use many times in this video series. We can now define the unit vector ui hat as 1 over hi times the partial derivative of the position with respect to ui. In polar coordinates, we have h1, which we call hr as 1, and h2, which we call h5 as r. If you follow this pattern, you can set up unit vectors for any orthogonal coordinate system. If you want to know if it's orthogonal or not, Simply check the dot product between the unit vectors and ensure that it is zero. Let us return to polar coordinates. Note that the unit vectors are constant if we change the radius. If we change the angle phi, however, both unit vectors will change their direction. In general, we have to prepare for that the unit vectors change direction with the coordinates. We will talk more about this when we go through integrals and derivatives. 
Let us rewrite the position vector using the unit vectors from polar coordinates. We can see from the figure that the position is r r hat, where I have added that r hat is a function of i. Currently, we now have to write r hat and phi hat in terms of x hat and y hat. But what if we want to write x hat and y hat in terms of r hat and phi hat instead? One way of calculating this would be to simply solve the linear system of equations we have. But there is an easier way. Let us rotate the coordinate system to make r hat horizontal and phi hat vertical. This shows that the transform from x hat and y hat to r hat and phi hat simply is a rotation using the angle phi. Hence the transform back should be the same rotation in the opposite direction. Therefore, apply the rotation but insert minus phi as angle. This gives an expression for x hat and y hat. We can use that sinus minus phi is minus sinus phi. And cosinus minus phi is the same as cosinus phi. Use these relationships again for x hat. And we have our final transform for how to write x hat and y hat in terms of r hat and phi hat. Next up, let's say we have a vector v expressed using x hat and y hat and want to write it using r hat and phi hat instead. A straightforward way is to insert expression for x hat and insert expression for y hat. Then distribute vx and vy. Reorder. Collect the r hat terms and the phi hat terms respectively. And we have the vector v expressed in terms of r hat and phi hat. Call the coefficient in front of r hat vr. And the coefficient in front of phi hat v phi. To get expressions for vx in terms of vr and vphi, let us show a different approach and use the dot product. We can use a simple projection and write that vx is v dot x hat. Insert expression for v in polar coordinates and the expression for x hat in polar coordinates. and carry out the dot product. Repeat for vy. Insert expression for y hat in polar coordinates. And calculate the dot product. These are expressions for converting vectors between Cartesian and polar coordinates. Note that vectors follow the same pattern as unit vectors in how you apply sinus and cosinus. Let us continue and talk about cylindrical coordinates, which is the three-dimensional version of polar coordinates. The difference here is that now we also have a z-value. Let's add the z-value as it is. We have a little bit of a naming problem here though. R is the position vector, which means that R without vector notation should be its length. This worked in polar coordinates, but this R is not the full length anymore. It is only the length in the xy plane. In this course, I will rename it and put an index P for polar to state that it's R for polar coordinates. You will see different names for this in different literature. 
This means that we have three variables, rp, phi and z, which describe the position in cylindrical coordinates. The three unit vectors will be rp hat and phi hat from polar coordinates and the z hat we had in Cartesian coordinates. If we change the value of rp, all unit vector stays the same. If we change the angle phi, both rp hat and phi hat will change their directions. If we change the value of z, all unit vector stays the same. As we want to have a right-oriented coordinate system, we should define z in the direction that follows the right-hand rule. This means that rp hat cross phi hat should be z hat. To follow the right-hand rule, I will also write them in the order rp, phi, and then z. This will be the end of our introduction video about cylindrical coordinates. In the next video, we'll talk about how to solve integrals in cylindrical coordinates. Thank you.